Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. This morning, getting ready to go to work, I wanted to show you guys uh, the difference of these guns. I'm getting a lot of people who are emailing me saying, Kirk, the guns I use, they're called roofing guns. They're the same PWs you use, it looks like in your videos. But then I got some newer ones. Let me show you guys the difference. These guys right here, these are uh, lathing guns. And Jay and I are both lathing and plastering contractors. We both carry C-35s, uh, that's our license. Now I've got these guys here. Jay has about three of these in his truck. I actually have about two of them in the shop. Um, I went to pick two of them up yesterday and they didn't have them ready for me. I guess that was their plan, huh? Well, if that's their plan, it's working because yesterday, these are the ones I like. They have the extra head right here to fit a two inch staple. So I just went ahead and purchased one of these. I've been seeing them on for sale for about 10 years now. And I thought, let me try a new one finally, just because a couple folks have said, Kirk, the single guns I've seen are different from the ones you show. These are the newer ones. I think they're like 10 years old. That's how outdated mine are. But anyhow, this gun right here, this is a Senko gun. We used to use pass load guns. Then they all switched to Senko right here for lathing. They also work for uh, roofing guns. In fact, this is the one I bought from my roofing buddy across the street. It had a little clip here and a clip here, which kept it off the roof for shingles. So I just pulled the clips off. It's not that great. So I went in yesterday to get my other ones and end up buying that. Anyhow, this is how you do these guns, guys. You buy a box of staples. Now this box right here, you just slide these in, stick it there. Pull this on and boom, you're ready to go. When you run out, you just keep putting them in here, pull this and put them in here. I actually have kits in my truck to pull all this apart, which by the way, I've seen three jobs in the last year that there's bumpers in here. There's a tongue. If you open this gate, there's a tongue that comes down. And when the bumpers go bad, that's when the staples puncture the paper as well as the wire. You don't want that, guys. So you got to know how to... I can tear this gun apart about an hour and put it back together. Um, let me show you some do's and don'ts. Don't lay your gun in the dirt because if you lay the dirt gun in the dirt, this track right here gets full of dirt or sand, which is even worse, or the sand goes in here and that's how all the pistons and all that stuff start malfunctioning. Why do I have so many guns that are malfunctioning? Because we do that all the time, unfortunately. You just get tired, it's 10 hours, at the end of the day, you drop your gun down and boom, it's got dirt in here or worse yet, sand in here. That's why I always close my box so sand doesn't go in there. Anyhow, what was I getting at? All right, these guns are designed 20, 30 years ago to fit seven eighths of an inch staple. Back then we had um, paperback. Jason sitting next to a roll of, of paperback. Now, anyhow, that paperback, we didn't need a shear wall, so our staples were only seven eighths of an inch. Seven eighths means the leg needs to go into the stud. 7 eighths, the crown is the top. Generally, we use inch and a quarter crown staples now. Inch and a quarter crown staples, that's as much as this little gun, this is a PW model, will hold. Inch and a quarter, that means 7 eighths of that leg is gonna go into the stud, even if you're using a thick shear wall like uh, 3 quarters. Most shear walls are 7 eighths, or uh, half inch, half inch. Now me, I like this gun right here. This got more power, it's got a bigger piston. It's able to use two inch staples. Who needs two inch staples? Well, sometimes you still gotta get that seven eighths into the stud to hold the amount of wire that's on a house. That's engineering stuff, guys, boring stuff. But anyway, this, this, uh, this particular gun right here, it's all jacked up. But the extra head gives me more power, so a lot of times I'll go through two flashings on the bottom, a drip screen. This is my perfect gun. I got two of these in the shop, and. Hopefully they'll get ready soon. This, anyhow, guys, there is a, there's no difference between this Senko here, this Senko here. This is just the updated model. So when you guys email me and say, man, I can't find that, that one you're using. This is 10, maybe 15, 25 years old, guys. These are the new ones. That's the difference. So uh, I thought I'd show you that. I'm heading to work right now. Um, oh, I might be pretty good at stucco, guys, but I always... Forget my lunch. Thank you, baby. You're welcome. Anyhow, my name is Kirk. Jason on the camera. We're walking out the door right now. I'm taking my good gun and bringing my box of staples because we are doing lathing today. So 
So anyhow, folks, you guys got any more questions about Senko guns? I might have missed a few things. We're in a hurry. I got to get out of here, and I'm forgetting my lunch and all kinds of weird stuff. Simply email me. If you like what we do, subscribe to our channel. Uh, my name is Kirk. I'm with Kirk Giordano, Plaster and Jason on the camera. And as usual, guys, we'll see you on the next one.